<sighs> Spurgeon. It's funny because the last book of my devotions in sharing devotions with Jesus and with you is always seems to be Spurgeon and <laughs> it's like a classic that just keeps giving, you know, but I enjoy it, you know, it's just a, it's a neat book and, you know, God has always used it in a special way and uh, one of the things that amazes me when you read the classics, especially a classic devotional, is that you see a level of commitment and understanding that is different than what we know of today, but in some ways is more intense, it seems, and is more tried and true. And I know that sounds biased because in every generation there's those that are completely sold out, you know, for Jesus that have dedicated their lives and have spent all of their life being ministers unto God. And to them we owe our education, really, our religious education as well as our our development in faith because they have fought the fight, they have run the race, they have attained to the crown. And we shouldn't look at those men of God as something that we cannot do, but rather we should recognize that in our own gifts and our own abilities that God has chosen for us to do, we can attain to full measure to the completeness of whatever vessel we are, and we could just be all the way filled up to overflowing, whether we be a coffee cup or a bigger vessel or even a larger one. And that's what God wants to do when he wants to fill you. He doesn't say that you have to be a great evangelist or a prophet or a teacher. He simply says, you have to be you. And let me design you the way I would have you to be. And that gives me great comfort because I don't know about you, but I'm nobody special. It's virgin. They gathered mana every morning. Labor to maintain a sense of thine entire dependence upon the Lord's good will and pleasure for the continuance of thy rich enjoyments. Never try to live on the old mana, nor seek to find help in Egypt. All must come from Jesus, or thou art undone forever. Old anointing will not suffice to impart unction to thy spirit. Your head must have fresh oil poured upon it from the golden horn of the sanctuary, or it will cease from its glory. Today thou mayest be upon the summit of the mount of God, but he who has put thee there must keep you there, or thou wilt sink far more readily than you dreamed of. Your mountains only stand firm when he settles it in its place. If he hide his face, thou wilt soon be troubled. If the Savior should see fit, there is not a window to which you could see light of heaven, which he could not darken in an instant. Joshua made the sun stand still, but Jesus can shroud it in total darkness. He can withdraw the joy of your heart and the light of your eyes and the strength of your life. In his hand is comfort, and in his hand is triumph. And at his will they can depart from you. This hourly dependence upon our Lord is determined that we shall feel and recognize, for he only permits us to pray for daily bread, and only promises that as our days, so shall our strength be. Is it not best for us that it should be so? that we may often repair to his throne and constantly be reminded of his love. Oh, how rich the grace which supplies to us continually and does not refrain itself because of our ingratitude. The golden shower never ceases. The cloud of blessings tarries evermore above our habitation. Oh, Lord Jesus, we would bow at your feet, conscious of our utter inability to do anything without you. And in every favor which we are privileged to receive, we would adore your blessed name and acknowledge your inexhaustible love. You know, Spurgeon always says it in such a beautiful way and such a poetic way, but he makes a point too. He always describes an utter, complete abandonment 
to God himself. To turning all of our cares, all of our love, all of our appreciation, all of our necessities, all of our needs, all of our daily wants to God every day and to not be satisfied or to think that we can take what we had today and run off till tomorrow to do what we need to do then. But rather, each day, we need to be filled again. We need to be renewed again. We need to be reminded again of His words that bring life to us, that fill us with His Spirit, that cause us to enjoy the day and to prosper in our way and to accomplish the purpose that He sets our feet upon that which He would have us to do. Because if we try to plan out our day and say, oh, well, you know, these next few weeks I'm going to do this and I'll be ever increasing in faith and getting smarter and wiser, God may have a trial or tribulation that comes your way that may not be that which you thought it was, but that He would humble you so you would be tenderized to touch the hearts of someone else who has need of you being less than what you think you are and more of what He wants you to be. The biggest problem we have as Christians is that we aren't as big as we think we are, but we are what God wants us to be when we choose to open ourselves up and let Him lead and not ourselves. That's why He is Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And He's meant to be and should be our God. Let Him lead. Isn't that what you want to do anyways?